Good morning. Hey, we are so glad that you can join us for Sabbath Sunday. We gather to worship our Lord. We take that time to rest, to be comfortable, but also to give thanks to the one who's provided all things. I hope that you had a Merry Christmas. I hope that you're enjoying time with your family and friends. I know we are. Now, it's the perfect opportunity for you. Make sure you have your coffee ready. Make sure that you are set up because we are looking to worship the Lord today. My name is Pastor Matt, and it's a privilege to be with you, and thank you for joining us on this Sabbath Sunday. Today, gather to praise his name. Come on, worship with us. We make our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing Emmanuel. Darkness running high at a baby's cry, at a baby's cry. Songs of angels fill the sky, break the silent night, break the silent night. Came flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. 
for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond all measure. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. In those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and as to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Our first reading today is from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 17. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and righteousness to children's children. Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from John 25 through 29. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> waits for a miracle world waits for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel a child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come
light of the world is here. A drought breaks with the tears of a mother. A baby's cry is the sound of love come down. celebrated this beautiful, beautiful day of Jesus' birth. I hope that your Christmas lived up to the expectations that you had. Now, we spent weeks upon weeks looking at, asking ourselves and anticipating, what is this that is coming? Why is this such a big deal? And each one of us had our own answers as to why we came to worship that day why we came to hear, why we came to sing, and why we came to praise. And we did. And we sang. And it was loud. And we saw the light of the world be here. And now, we sit here on this day, waiting to turn over for the first time into 2024. Let me be the first to wish you a happy new year. And as we take a look back on 2023, I'm sure that you have a mixed bag of emotions. As you look back and think about where you were at this time last year, some of you have lots of good and fond memories to think of and how much things have changed. I can tell you that this time last year, we were firing up the snowblower. <laughs> Not doing that this year. Maybe you're exactly where you thought you would be. Maybe you're someplace that you never once expected to be. And yet here we are. Here we are, each of us, waking up, gathering, coming 
on a day when nobody else would know and no one would know that you didn't watch this. And yet you made it a point because you knew it was a big deal that this needed to be praised, that there was excitement about why we were here. And so we gather in God's house today, excited, surrounded by the very things that we love and the people that we love, praising our Lord. And so we hear those beautiful words from the psalmist that say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquity. Our iniquity. All that which we have done that separates us from him, he forgives because he is merciful and his mercies are renewed every day and every year. As we turn to start a new year, we remember that God creates the new year and a new you out of his own love and mercy. He makes you new each day. But we also hear those words from the psalmist that remind us that, man, his days are like the grass. He flourishes like the flower. The wind passes over it, and then it's gone. The place knows him no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Not all memories are exciting. Not all memories put us in a spot where we are excited. Because we know that our days are numbered. We know that eternity is not for us here on this earth. We know that disease comes. We know that we need to be redeemed from the pit. And we know that we need someone who will love us more than anyone on this earth. We feel that. We feel the emptiness. We feel the loneliness. Maybe right now you are watching for the first time, sitting, having to experience this at the end of the year and starting a new one without a loved one. For the first time. Maybe 2023 didn't work out the way you thought it would because you thought by the end of it you would be in a different place, you would have a different job, you would have a different title, but it hasn't worked out the way that you thought. Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, Pastor, does anybody even care? Does anybody even care that I'm watching today? My friend, the answer is yes. Yes. Because his steadfast love is that which is renewed and lifted up like an eagle's, eagle's wing. When we look to what God has done for us, we don't look at the things. We don't look at what we unwrapped as presents under the tree. We don't look at what we may or may not have gained or lost in 2023. Instead, we take our cue from the Pharisees of all people. Because the Pharisees heard Jesus say that truly, truly, I say to you that you are seeking me not because you saw signs, not because you think that I am the Christ, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. You were hungry and you got fed and that's why you follow me because you're seeing what's in it for you. And Jesus tells them, don't work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For the Father, on him, God the Father, has set his seal. This is the promise for you. This is the gift for you. Not food that will fill your belly. Not food that will taste better than coffee or the eggs that you're eating now. But it's food that promises to fill you up each and every day for the rest of your life that says that you will never be alone. If you remember all that time back to April, I asked you guys, what memories are you storing up? What are you putting in your mason jars? 
What are you putting into other people's mason jars that they might come one day and look at? As 2023 ends and we look at what's in those jars, are we seeing things of this earth? Are we seeing awards and accolades about our self that we put on there? Are we seeing memories? Are we seeing laughter? Are we seeing joy that God has brought together? Are we seeing new beginnings and seeing old ones that were loved, that were cherished because of what God had given during those times? And friends, I tell you this, just because a memory is on a shelf doesn't mean that it wasn't important or that it no longer holds value. Many of us have memories that we put up there and we hold very fondly because of how great that season was that God brought into our lives. But just like Jesus continued to walk this earth, we continue to walk through the paths that he has set for us. And we don't set our mind on any singular place. But instead, we continue to move forward, following where God would have us go. So instead of looking at selfish awards, instead of looking at ourselves, we turn back to our jars, and we fill them up with the food that never ends. The Pharisees asked the best question I think they asked throughout all of Scripture. It says, if we're not supposed to do that, then what is it that we must be doing to follow the works of God? And Jesus says, it's easy, guys. This is the work of God, that you believe in him who has sent me, who he has sent. Believe in Jesus. It's that easy. We fill our jars, not with our own selves, but we fill them with Jesus himself the acts of compassion and kindness that he works through us, the ways in which we see his angels attend to us, the saints of this earth who gather around us, who help us pack before a move, who come over and see us into new places, those who gather around our bedside on our final days, and those whose hands we hold to get through hard times and the tough measures that are here on this earth. All of them exist because of the love that Christ first gave to us. We saw that light that came into the world. We saw how it filled up every corner of the room and would not allow any darkness to exist. That same light fills every corner of a jar because darkness does not exist where Christ is. Christ is the one who gives us our hope. Christ is the one who gives us our future. Christ is the one who gives us our life. And as we are ready to turn the page into 2024, we take our mason jar and we put it back on the shelf for 2023 and open a new one, fresh with the cross going in front of us to remind us that even as we go, he goes with us and we follow that light boldly to see what this year has for each and every one of us, I invite you to take a moment today to look around the room you're sitting in, to look at your phone, and see who it is that you need to call. And start building those memories. Start filling those jars with our Christ-centered families, our Christ-centered friendships, and our Christ-centered memories that will be built by following his word and the way that he has created us to be. I look forward to seeing you all in 2024 through the blessing of Christ. Is there any way your pastor would ever get through a service without messing up his words? At least you know it's real. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, your mercies have been renewed each and every day. And Lord, for the times that I continually think that I have to do it myself or that I look to myself for answers, Lord, help me know it's a burden I don't have to carry. Lord, I thank you that you continually remind me each day that your blessings are freely given. I just have to see the cross first. Help me to stay focused on you and not on myself. 
Help me to count all the numerous ways you've blessed me even before I've asked for that blessing. And Lord, may I be a blessing to others. Use me. Use my words. Use my heart. And help me to see others the way that you see them. This is my prayer for 2024. Amen. At this time, we're going to give you guys an opportunity. Uh, it does say offering plate in the commons. You don't have to worry about that today because you're not in the commons. But if you do uh, have a chance to give first of those blessings that God is pouring out into your life, there is an opportunity through the ChristLittleRock.com. So we'll just give you a couple of moments here if you want to pull out your phone, pull out your device, or head, your, head on over to ChristLittleRock.com if that's your choice. Um, we... We love you guys, and we're excited to be a part of this worship as this is a piece of our worship. join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we are on the cusp of entering a brand new year, we pray for the world around us. The world that is, man, if it was up to the world all by itself, it would just continue in darkness and to go deeper and deeper into darkness. But you are the light of this world and you are the light of our lives, God. So we thank you for that light, and we pray that we are sent into this world, not just today, not just as we enter a new year, but every day, to go and be a light, just like we talked about on Christmas, a light that is meant to be sent, a light that is meant to be in the darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, for Arkansas and for Little Rock, for our communities here, we lift up our leaders, we lift up our country, we lift up the people that you have placed above us just for wisdom, for discernment. This world, like I said earlier, is something that can easily spin into chaos if it weren't for you, so let your goodness and your light bubble up in them as it does in all of us so that we can put our best foot forward and that best foot is in you and the love that you've shown us this gift that you've been that we've been given here on Christmas. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, for our community here at Christ Little Rock and for all of the extended community of Christ Little Rock, for all that we know in this world who are hurting, who are lonely, who are sick, who need you, Heavenly Father. We pray that they feel your presence today whether that's through an affirmative answered prayer or through a, a pat on the back from a friend or just a smile from a stranger, God, I pray that they see you moving in their lives in a real and mighty way. And I pray that you empower us here as Christ Little Rock to go and be a part of your solution in this world, be a part of your light to spread that good news and that good cheer of this baby being born. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for our families, God, I pray that you bless each and every one of our families, not just the ones who can watch this morning, but all of our families, that you continue to bless each and every one of them so that you may be the center of each of the relationships, the budding relationships and the family relationships. And God, you know exactly where your presence is necessary. So God, I pray that you continue to be a part of of what is happening in our world, in our lives, in our communities, so that we can continue to go in your name and spread your word to the world that needs it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we close this time of prayer out by praying the words that your Son taught us to pray. We pray together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Let his face shine upon you. May he look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 So wherever you're at, today you can stand, you can dance, you can clap. We're going to sing about this good news that we have and how we can go and tell it to the ends of the earth. Go tell it on the mountain. Sing with us. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. The shepherd feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. Then God sent us salvation, that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ, is, that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is one more time. That Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Y'all have a good one.